All right, guys, welcome back. So on this video, I'm gonna do my honest review of the S10 Plus after this. All right, guys, welcome back. So on this channel, I do a lot of unboxings and honest reviews just like this one. If you're new here, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on any future content just like this one. I've actually been using the S10 Plus since its launch. Uh, I pre-ordered it and I've been using it every day um, ever since then. So this review is a breakdown of some of the things that I like about the phone and some of the things that I don't like about the phone and also what's new for this year for the S10 Plus. So if you think about it, the S10 Plus is actually the first flagship to be launched in 2019 and it's only gonna get bigger and better from here. Um, with the S10 Plus, I do feel like the Galaxy series is a little bit um, considered half-baked because if you look at every single release date, first it's always the Galaxy series and then there's the beefier version which is the Note series. So a lot of people do compare the um, S10 Plus or S9 or whatever to the Note series and they do feel that um, the Galaxy series is considered half-baked because there are certain features that are missed on the Galaxy series which are then found on the Note series. So with this year's um, Galaxy series, it was launched in three different variations. The E series, which I consider the budget friendly version, which has some features on it. The specs aren't as high end and it's made to uh, target consumers that are on a tight budget. Then you have the normal Galaxy series, the S10, which uh, has a 6 inch screen. And then finally the Plus series, which is considered to be the top end and top of the line series, which has a bigger screen as well as a couple of other features. So the one that I have here is the ceramic black version and it actually comes in two different versions. So 512 gigabytes storage, which has eight gigabytes of RAM. And if you wanna bump it up to the one terabyte, you'll actually get 12 gigabytes of RAM. I know that sounds a lot and I'm gonna be completely honest. I've been using this for approximately a month and a half to two months now. And I've never gone over five gigabytes of RAM with my daily usage, which consists of, you know, everything from sending emails, social media on Instagram and Twitter to playing a little bit of games. I'm currently playing PUBG and to recording videos, taking photos, communicating, you know, over uh, WhatsApp as well as over the phone and doing a lot of video calls. So doing those tasks, I've never gone over five gigabytes of RAM. The new things on this phone compared to the S9 are mainly gonna be found on the internal portion of the phone compared to the externals. The most obvious change you'll notice is mainly the front of the phone. You now have a beautiful full screen phone. Um, you don't have a front facing camera or a little bit of a notch. It's actually um, built into the screen and no matter what Samsung tries to play it, a notch is a notch. It might not be as big as the iPhone X notch or even the Google Pixel 3 notch. It's still a little notch. Uh, Coming from an iPhone X to the S10 Plus, I didn't notice it as much as somebody who's coming from a phone that has no notches to something like the S10 Plus. I did get used to it within a couple of days of having that little cutout screen on the top right of the corner. Now in terms of the notch, I personally don't like where Samsung has placed the notch. I do feel that the notch um, and the screen area around it, it's kind of gone to waste because the screen area above the notch is kind of stuck and you can't really use it. However, I would have loved to see it right in the middle, right above the top, similar to the iPhone X or the Pixel 3. That way you do have um, some space on the left side of the phone as well as some space on the right side of the phone. But one thing I love about Samsung and they are absolutely amazing at this is the actual screen of this phone. It's absolutely one of the best screens I've ever used um, comparing to the iPhone X, the OnePlus and even the Google series. This is probably one of the best phone screens I've ever consumed content on. And so for the screen, you have a super bright, vivid 6.4 Quad HD Plus screen with a resolution of 1440 by 3040, and it's absolutely bright and crispy. Equally important, compared to the Google Pixel 3, the SN Plus doesn't have any blue light uh, escaping. I haven't really noticed that in any angle. So from every angle, the viewing distance and the viewing off the screen is absolutely amazing. You still get the really helpful edge display allowing you to place your favorite apps on the right side of the phone that you can just like swipe to the right 
and easily access. Um, I personally don't use that as much coming from an iPhone X. Um, I wasn't used to those things, but it's good to have those on the side. So this may not be um, a big thing for some, but others it might be a huge deal breaker. One thing I've noticed when I'm outside is the screen glare found on the S10 Plus is actually pretty significant and it kind of ruins the enjoyment of the phone, especially when it's sunny outside compared to some of the other phones like the OnePlus 7 Pro and the iPhone XS. I found that on the S10 Plus, without any uh, screen protectors, it's still a very high screen glare. So the next biggest thing you're gonna notice is the fingerprint reader at the back of the phone is no longer there. They've kind of followed what Huawei and OnePlus have done and they've incorporated the fingerprint reader inside the screen. And I personally do not like it. I'm not, I'm not a huge fan of it. And the biggest reason is I'm one of those people who loves to um, protect you know, my screen by having one of those like plastic and glass cases applied on top of the screen. Now, if you use one of those cases, you're not able to use the fingerprint reader, which is underneath the screen. There is only one product out there right now, which I'll leave right below the subscribe button. And the reason why I'm not recommending it, it's $100 Canadian starting, um, as well as the application process is not as simple as peel and apply. It's actually a very long process. It takes about an hour or so to completely apply the glue and using the uh, UV light to apply the screen protector. The biggest advantage of using the in-screen fingerprint reader is that it's much easier to use compared to having the fingerprint reader at the back of the phone. I personally like it at the back. It's very simple. If you're ever holding your phone, um, I typically hold my phone like this. So having it in the middle would be very nice and uh, I find it like a more, more of an ergonomical thing compared to the S9 Plus that had it up here. So that was a little bit of a reach for some people. And I get it why Samsung went this way where they're able to put that underneath the screen. And it's much easier to unlock your phone having it in the middle. Now the phone does come with a screen protector uh, factory installed by Samsung. And I'm not gonna lie, it's a very thin and flimsy screen protector and it gets scratches so easily, so you will have to keep on purchasing those small screen protectors um, every once in a while. But do keep in mind, those screen protectors are only a very thin layer of plastic. They're not gonna protect your phone if you ever drop it on the floor. So the button placement on the SM Plus is also really good. It's uh, on the right side, you get your power button. On the left, you get your volume rocker, and then you get the Bixby button. Unfortunately, Samsung is standing strong with their Bixby. They're not allowing you to change the Bixby button to the Google Now or any other um, software. You are able to change the double tap feature, but once again, you can't change it to the Google Now, which kind of sucks. Um, I think Bixby is good, but it's still really behind when it comes to Google Now or even Siri. I would love to be able to change it to something that I like and not be stuck with Bixby. As of right now, I have the double tap changed to opening the camera and you are able to change it to other things and other applications that you like. Um, there might not be that many, there are some options out there. So at the bottom of the phone, you get your usual suspects on any Samsung phone. You get your speakers, you get your USB-C charging port, and then once again, you have your headphone jack located on this device. Um, Samsung has not moved away from the headphone jacks for this device. And by doing that, they are still capping that market that loves to have a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. Personally, I don't use one of those headphones. I have my Gear Icon X from the Note 9 launch that were given to anybody who pre-ordered as a free gift. So the speakers on this phone are absolutely amazing. I have never heard such loud speakers. These speakers are super, super loud. And even at high volumes, they're still pretty clear and very loud. Um, if you are in a small apartment, you put your phone on full blast, I guarantee you, you're gonna be able to hear the phone and the content from every single room in your apartment. The speakers are that loud. So similar to last year's S9 Plus, the S10 Plus also comes with three cameras, your normal camera, your macro lens, and then your micro lens. Um, what I've found is like the normal camera has good picture quality, not the best, um, but when I'm using the wide angle lens, what I've found is it does get blurry in certain pictures, particularly if you are zooming in, you will notice a lot of blur in certain images. And I believe this is completely a software thing. It can be fixed. Samsung just has to get on and fix it. Now, when I first got the phone and uh, 
when I've been using it for a month and a half, there was no night mode like the Google Pixel 3 had. Samsung just dropped a um, update which has like a night nightscape effect for the picture. So I have to still test it out and see how it actually is. Now, another great new feature that they have is this phone not only has um, Qi wireless charging, it's a new feature that's um, unveiled on the S10 Plus. It's called a two-way wireless charging. What it does is you're able to use your phone as a charging port and you're able to place another Qi enabled device on top of the phone and it will charge the device. Now, it's not intended to charge a secondary phone. It's mainly intended to charge accessories like your gear watch or even your um, headphones that have a wireless charging base. So if you're ever out and about and your headphones drop to zero, just place them on top and it'll start charging. It's very simple to do. You just drop down the menu, select wireless charging, and then you'll be able to charge your device. So this phone does come equipped with eight gigabytes of RAM. On my everyday usage, like I mentioned earlier, I haven't been able to hit those eight gigabytes of RAM, but if you have, leave a comment down below. Let me know what kind of applications you're running where you're actually hitting the full eight gigabytes of RAM. If you are just using this phone for checking your emails, you know, um, browsing a couple things, using Instagram and other apps, you're never gonna hit those eight gigabytes of RAM. So you're good if you are thinking about purchasing this phone for those particular reasons. So this phone does come with a 4,400 milliamp hour battery. Um, when I first got the phone, I did notice that the battery life wasn't as great as expected. I was getting three to three and a half hours of screen on time with the battery and it would drop down to 15%. However, with the latest update, it's actually gotten much better. On an average day, I get about five to five and a half hours of screen on time, which is using the Quad HD screen. Now, if you drop it down to the normal HD screen, you will be able to increase the battery life a little bit further. Now, when talking about the battery and the battery life, one thing I don't like about this phone and one thing I don't like what Samsung has done is by having a bigger battery, the charging times are still the same and they're very, very long. I wish they followed the steps of OnePlus where they have a brand new charger called Warp Charge or even Dash Charge where you're able to get a significant burst of battery for the first 30-40% and then it slowly climbs up. Now with the S10 Plus you still get the same charger but what I've noticed is the charging times are very very high and that's one thing I don't like about the phone. I wish they had a faster charger coming out of the box. So to wrap things up, I still believe that this phone is a great buy, but not for long because 2019 just started and there's a lot of great phones coming out. The Google Pixel 4, the OnePlus 7 Pro, which I have right here, and I'm testing it out and it's absolutely amazing as well as the next iPhone X. Equally important, the Galaxy Note launch is just around the corner. So be on the lookout for that. I know there's gonna be a lot of great features coming out on the Note, and it sucks that the S10 Plus did not have those features that are gonna be available on the Note series. I would love to see those added on the Galaxy S10 series. All right guys, I hope you guys enjoyed watching this review. If you did, hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. Let me know in the comments section down below some of the things that you like about the S10 Plus and some of the things that you hate. And I have a lot more videos coming out, so make sure you subscribe if you haven't done so, and share this video with somebody who is thinking about purchasing the S10 Plus. Um, it might be helpful for them. As always, thank you for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Goodbye.